this Just Stop Oil slogan is very playgroundish, isn't it? It's very Vicky Pollard. It's quite childish. How dare you question us, because we know what's right. I'm going to glue my hand to some tarmac and then I'm going to be a martyr and I'm going to be a good person. I'm just... I just can't believe... I just can't believe that that's what you're saying. There was one hell of a discussion on Good Morning Britain between a climate activist and basically everyone else on the panel. So a couple of anchors and a journalist all battling this climate activist trying to knock some sense into these people. And this reminded me a lot of the movie Don't Look Up. So more on that in a bit. First, this initial clip, so I have a few clips here to show you. This first clip is around the discussion of the Just Stop Oil activists. This is the group that this activist is a part of, Just Stop Oil. They are currently blocking fuel depots um, in Britain, and that has led to some shortages at filling stations. So some slight inconveniencing for some people. So this is where we get to the first clip. Do you accept that you're possibly alienating people who, in a general sense, would support your background cause? Um... Because you are alienating them. Yeah, I mean, I would say I don't think any of us want to be disrupting people's lives, but I think, given the science and the things that academics are saying about what oil is causing around the world, and in this country too, this is the level of action that needs to be taken when our government is failing on their energy policies and their climate pledges. But you'd accept, wouldn't you, that it's a very complicated discussion to be had. It's a very complicated thing. And this Just Stop Oil slogan is very playgroundish, isn't it? It's very Vicky Pollard. It's quite childish. <sighs> Just Stop Oil. I mean, come on, there's more to say than that, isn't there? I would say that the answers are actually very simple. We need to stop new oil licensing, and that's all we're asking. You know, with the oil reserves that we have now and the oil fields that we have that are still going, that would provide us with eight years of oil if we said no to new oil. And that's what we're asking for. But We've how seen... do the blockades advance that argument? They, do, they don't, do they? They simply cause nothing but disruption and you, and you get a negative reaction. I've got to tell you, we, we were expecting to get some messages of support from our viewers for you. Mm -hmm. We haven't had one, not one. We've had nothing but, but furious complaints from people. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing positive at all. I wonder if any of you have read the latest IPCC reports that have come out this year. Yeah. You know, what they have said is that we are on the road for climate catastrophe. We are on the road for three degrees of warming. This will happen to my generation, to your children's generation, potentially to your grandchildren. And I think we have a moral responsibility to act now. You know, we're supposed to be climate leaders. We're geopolitical leaders. We could set the way for the, for the whole planet by committing to stopping oil moving to energy efficiency, moving to renewables, moving to yes. insulation. And I think the children and the future deserve at least well, that. All right, so I have a couple of more clips coming up here, but first, there are some things to say. On the point that the anchor made, which, by the way, if you watch the movie Don't Look Up, it reminds me a lot of these anchors, just not taking this issue seriously and making a big uh, joke out of it. Meanwhile, you know, the people with the science on their side trying to talk about how serious this issue is and they're not taking it seriously but apart from that the point the the anchor made there about we have not gotten one message in in support of what you're doing that really showcases how terrible of a job you are doing as good morning britain in communicating how serious the climate crisis is if you on a consistent basis actually educated your viewers into understanding how serious the issue is you would have a lot more messages coming in in support of these climate activists. So, I mean, he's telling on himself there about how uh, unserious they are when it comes to this issue. Now, the other aspect of this is like, you think not filling up your tank for a weekend is disruption? Wait till the food shortages. Wait till the droughts. Wait till mass migration. Wait till coastal cities are underwater. That's real disruption. Not filling up your tank for a weekend, yeah, may be a little dis disruptive for some people, but it's nothing compared to what's coming, which is the point, part of the point that these activists here are trying to make. And if you think, oh, they're, they're hurting their message, you're telling me civil rights, gay rights protests, they never disrupted anybody? <laughs> like, come on. Obviously, they did. You have to do this, at least occasionally, to make a story for it to be discussed. They would not be discussing this issue at all on this day, in this morning, if it weren't for these protests. And 
you know, this is like a, a longer clip, which by the way, if you watch the entire 12 minutes, it, like <laughs> you'll want to bang your head against a wall. It is so insane how they're going after this, this, this woman for, for fighting for just understanding reality, science, what the UN is trying to, to, to tell the world. But I forget the point I was trying to make now, <laughs> but the, the whole, the, the segment is completely nuts. And I will get to another example of that uh, shortly here. But first, as she has been, she said throughout that, that discussion, the UN warns Earth firmly on track toward an unlivable world. So this is what we are up against. And if I think I'm now remembering the point I was going to make, if you don't disrupt, occasionally disrupt everyday lives, you're not going to get coverage for this incredibly serious issue. And in that 12 minute discussion there, she goes on to discuss how they've sent letters. There's a hunger protest going on that, they, that the media has not covered at all. So this is one way that has clearly worked to have some coverage of this incredibly important issue. And again, the fact that you're not getting messages in to this uh, this news anchor or to this this morning show in support of these climate protests again shows you how they do not cover this issue properly. Now, a little more before I get to the next clip here. So supporters of the Just Stop Oil campaign have taken action at 11 different fuel terminals in England since the start of the month, blockading and trespassing on sites to stop tankers entering, filling up or leaving to deliver f fuel. Petrol retailers say that the protests are not having a serious impact on deliveries, but there have been dozens of local reports of petrol pumps running dry and Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, said people across the country were seeing their lives brought to a standstill by a disruption caused by the campaign. The protesters have vowed to continue taking action until the government agrees on a ban on all new fossil fuel projects. On Monday afternoon, their 11th day of action, several were entering their 31st hour chain to pipe work at Inter Terminal in Grays, Essex, the third largest terminal in the country. And here is a video, I believe, directly from that, um, that shows you the, the climate activists here and what they are fighting for. I'm Nathan, I'm 22 years old. Yeah, I'm Louis, to, uh, 21. Um, we're here at Gray's Oil Terminal in Essex, the third largest in the country, where we've been for about 31 hours, completely disrupting the flow of product out of the site. We're doing this because our government is refusing to act on the climate crisis, and we need a meaningful statement that we will, we will have no new fossil fuel projects. It's that simple. So there they are at the protest there. And look, what they're asking for is nothing crazy. They're just asking for no new fossil fuel projects. This is what the UN is asking for. This is what scientists are saying. So these aren't extremists. These are people that are living in reality. Everyone else against them, they're the extremists. And to give you an example of that, here is this absolutely crazy lady. This is a journalist. I forget her name. I'll get to it after the clip. But oh my God, uh, here are a couple of clips from her from this segment. What I, the, the problem I have is, is, is this idea that the one group of people have decided that they are the ones to save the world. And there's a certain po-faced, incredibly irritated, I'm getting it coming off in waves towards me here, like, how dare you question us because we know what's right. I'm going to glue my hand to some tarmac and then I'm going to be a martyr and I'm going to be a good person, while the rest of us can't get on with our day. But it's about ego. There's no doubt that we've had a winter without any... Uh, protest, but as soon as the sun comes out, oh, it's eco festival time, and it is a festival. It's a big jamboree. It's let's get on social media, let's sit down with a placard, let's advertise to my friends what a great person I am. While the rest, of ordinary people who have to go to work, can't get to work. What's your response? I'm just, I just can't believe, I just can't believe that that's what you're saying. The United Nations are telling us if we get to 1.7 degrees of warming, half of the population will be exposed, exposed to climate conditions that are unlivable, And that's unworkable. what you're here to talk about, but I suppose the point isn't about saying the facts over and over again. It's about the actual protests and about exactly. the disruption. In the, and it is just incredible how disconnected from reality these people are. And they're gaslighting the activist there to, to make her feel like she's the crazy one. They are the crazy ones. 
like this this lady the, the first lady there uh Lori Turner is her name a journalist she tells on herself I mean by <laughs> like the point here that she that she makes about well we have to work while you protest that line can literally be used against every protest in the history of the world oh get a job why are you out here protesting for for better conditions for the future of the planet for the future of humanity maybe because this is a very important issue that needs to be focused on and you people as journalists as this morning show are not focusing on it enough to the point that even your own viewers there's not a single one of them that are in support of the these climate activists like it, it the, her focus here on like she's projecting incredibly about how this is about ego and oh they're the righteous ones and we have to go to work. She's basically saying, I feel shitty because I know you're right. I know I'm wrong, but I'm not going to do anything about it. I've already failed your generation by doing nothing about it. So instead, we're going to continue ignoring this incredibly important issue while you're out there on the front lines fighting for it. And I'm going to make fun of you because you post about it on social media as a way to generate attention to a very important issue. Like nothing she says here that this journalist says here is is debating the actual points of the climate crisis or what the IPCC report says, what the UN's saying, what the scientists are saying. She isn't debating any of that because she knows she can't debate that. So instead, it's for her all about image as opposed to what the underlying issue actually is and what they are actually fighting for. It's a very disturbing segment to watch it's 10 minutes long and it's like these people are out in just their own world they have absolutely no idea what is going on one of the anchors you know tries to claim that she understands how important the issue is but then goes on to just undermine <laughs> the climate the climate activists the entire time like it is really remarkable just how disconnected these people are